Welcome aboard, fellow seekers. You're tuning in to another episode of Interviewing Jesus podcast. Think of us as your personal GPS navigating the highways and the byways of the extraordinary. Today, we're setting the coordinates for a deep dive into the spiritual realm. A journey that defies the constraints of time and place. Picture this. You're standing face to face with a figure who has shaped the world as we know it today. You're looking into the eyes of Jesus Christ, the personification of divine love and wisdom. And you've got one question that's been on your mind. What happened? What occurred? Did anything change on the day I started to believe? On the day I was saved? An encounter you will never forget. I'll see you on the inside. Hello from the Pacific Northwest. This is Kristen from kristenwambach.com and you're listening to Interviewing Jesus Podcast. Answer me this. How does a Baptist farm girl from Oregon stumble upon the mystical nature of Christ, the love of God? If you're like me, Jesus has redefined what you used to say yes to. Join me and my guests on a mystical journey. But before we talk about the spiritual woo-woo, you need to know I am totally sold out to Jesus. It's amazing what the love of God reveals. As your question floats in the air, reality starts to change and warp. Time becomes fluid, and you are catapulted back to that life-changing moment. Remember, the day when faith sparked within you. In his kind and compassionate way, Jesus begins to narrate the sequence of events, painting a picture rich with grace, hope, and transformation. You begin to see through his eyes the stirring of your heart. The moment doubts receded and your soul felt the divine touch. He starts talking about those late-night chats you had with yourself, the prayers mumbled alone, and the tears shed in the silence of the night. Jesus traces the route you've taken since that day, spotlighting the high and the low points, the lessons absorbed, and the love that steered you. He points out the strength you unearthed in your weakest moments and the light that pierced through the darkest times. In this divine exchange, you realized that your belief wasn't just a fleeting moment, but an ongoing journey, one that continues to evolve with each new day. As the vision wanes and you're back in the present, you left with a deep sense of peace and purpose, knowing that your faith is a guiding star that will never fail you. So let's get started, family. Welcome 
Today, we are cracking open the mysteries of faith, the might of belief, and the everlasting presence of divine love. Welcome, welcome, dear family, where the extraordinary is everyday stuff. Did you ever ask yourself, can we do this? Is this legal? (laughs) Can Jesus really show us the time, that moment we believed? Some of us, like me, may have been a young child seated in church, If you're like my husband, he had that moment walking on the beaches of Hawaii during the Vietnam War. When did you believe? Or when did Jesus knock on the door of your heart and it opened and you opened it and knew that there was an exchange of love that day. But what happened in the realm of the Spirit? Well, I do have a story for you. Shall we open the pages of the unfinished book? A couple years back, I asked the Lord about my conversion experience. Yes, when I got saved. I invited Jesus into my heart and I said, quotes, the sinner's prayer. I have shared with you bits and pieces of those memories or as much as my uh, sanctified imagination has provided. I was eight years old. Couldn't tell you what Pastor Whiting was preaching about, but I heard and I answered the call. The pastor invited me to come forward and meet Jesus. So I did. I raised my hand from the seventh row, left hand side, and began to move out of my seat. Most of us are familiar with this kind of step of faith and probably prayed a similar prayer with the pastor or a leader at the altar. That part I really don't remember. The upfront praying stuff. That is why I asked the Lord, what actually, from the perspective of the realm of the kingdom of heaven, what actually happened on that day, on my day? In the spirit of it all, we've heard such stories about angels having a party in heaven but I've never heard a testimony from the spirit realm on this transaction, on this transition. So, he showed me. Stepping into the picture, the encounter with him, he whisked me away in the spirit back into and inside the First Baptist Church, Monmouth, Oregon, through an invisible door. The divine meeting altered me. My eyes spiritually opened, measured time, surrendered, and I found myself once again standing in front of my seat. Row 7, left hand side pew, Christy Richards Wombeck, 55 years old, looking from my heart eyes inside myself, seeing myself at age 8. 
I could still see my family sitting in the pew. I was standing. The sanctuary was filled, well attended with all the familiar folks. They were in time. I was outside of time. It appears as if the molecules of my body and the people around me were moving at different speeds. Huh. The invitation sound of the call to him has transformed me, changed my hearing and my sight. Coming down the aisle, moving around Pastor Whiting, was Jesus. He was dressed in a beautiful white robe with a simple gold woven thread belt, wavy dark brown hair about shoulder length. Yes, mm, that was Jesus and he was walking toward me, blue eyes with transforming fire. They didn't appear like I'm going to get burned up, fire or flames. They were pools of love, on fire love cisterns overflowing into the entire room, into my inner being. Jesus, he stretched forth his right hand towards mine. My thoughts seemed spoken out loud. Did Pastor Whiting have any idea that he was really here. Jesus' smile was filled with outstretched mystical hands as if touching people as he passed by them sitting in their row. I took hold of his extended hand and the room filled with the flame of 10,000 candles angels and glory. I was unaware, all irrelevant to seeing him looking at me. Jesus smiled at me. I took in the atmosphere. I breathed it in, seeing and feeling and sensing heaven opening on the earth. My curious nature squeezed tight to his hand. I was safe. I was safe. I felt like his arms were hugging and holding me with more than just his hand. Curiosity in me. I was surveying everywhere to capture the room and the spirit. <laughs> I caught a directional shift of his eyes, and I turned my head left. The colors of the stained glass window panes, they moved, and they changed into a bright living liquid. I've never seen them that way on a Sunday morning. Then they stepped through. <laughs> larger than life, as windows became doors giving access. At eight, I didn't recognize the two of them. My understanding at age 55 did. Both of them were dressed as Jesus was, white linen robes tied at the waist, their tan leather belts, not gold like his. The one standing next to Jesus on my left was tall, six foot something, strong, sturdy, muscular. His robe just gracing his knees, hair a wash of ash blonde with streaks of brown, loosely trimmed up over his neck regal in demeanor. He looked at Jesus, his eyes honored and bowed. When Jesus looked at him, they appeared to be old friends, trusted, faithful. 
My eyes at this moment seem to have many lenses or visions which viewed extra sightedness. Ah, it's hard to explain. In one lens, I could look at this larger than life man wearing armor and a sword. But in the other lens, he was prostrated on his face, receiving instruction, notable in council. There was an awe about him as we met, eye to eye. Um, not a man to trifle with, a man of excellent standing. In awe, my spiritual eyes moved on to meet my next heavenly introduction. His spirit man felt familiar. <laughs> I liked him right away. Many things about him they were similar to me, and I wasn't sure how I knew this. Mm, five nine or five ten, wiry, more unkempt, but very keenly aware. His hair color was like Jesus, messy, just below the chin. And a grin from ear to ear with a mischievous persona. Like, he's the guy from your youth that you hang out with if you want to jump the fence and avoid paying for tickets to get into an outdoor concert. He didn't have any boundaries. Break rules that need breaking. Great faith. His and Jesus' eyes met, and they exchanged thoughts simultaneously. Jesus, he nudged me over toward my new friend, and he put his arm around my shoulders. I found myself standing between them, watching a conversation shared without a word spoken. Did I keep an eye contact with Jesus? in a nervous kind of way, saying in my spirit, uh, you're staying close, right? You're not going anywhere? Absolutely. Moses looked at me, mentor to student. <laughs> Elijah grinned and chuckled as a friend, and we had water under the bridge for seeing my destiny and what I would forerun slow. As swiftly as I had been taken through to another realm, I was once again back through the mystical doorway sitting in my living room on my prayer pillow. By this time, I was weeping. Jesus had shown me what had happened on the day of salvation, the day I believed that moment that he just reached inside my heart and touched me. Now that's a conversion experience, amen? It took me 55 years to encounter it. My head is whirling with questions. But the emotion of the encounter is fresh, bubbling up. I know where I was and the type and shadow it created. <sighs> Tomorrow's another day. Amazing. It's as clear today as the moment his hands opened a world of the spirit no fear absolutely no fear curiosity on steroids yes but no fear i was with jesus and he always leads us into all truth he is truth 
how did my tale, my encounter, make you feel? I have a few questions to ask and share with you. Have you asked Jesus to show you the day you believed? Or were you just like me, also sitting in church the day you got saved? I bet you heard about the famous sinner's prayer. You might even believe it's a biblical concept. But here's the twist. It's not actually in the Bible. Oh my goodness. Here's a little history lesson for you. The sinner's prayer was brought into the limelight by none other than the influential Baptist preacher, Billy Graham. Yes, I got to see him in person. Awesome, awesome. For the past 50 plus years, Graham, along with a host of other evangelical preachers, has steered millions towards praying the sinner's prayer for forgiveness as the expressway to salvation. A few Bible verses are used to justify the sinner's prayer, despite its not being mentioned anywhere in Scripture. For example, some leaders believe Acts 2.21 supports the argument that a person saying a sinner's prayer brings salvation. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? Another passage that often is cited in support of the sinner's prayer is Luke 18.13. The tax collector beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. But does this passage confirm a sinner's prayer as the only means of redemption? Hmm. Let's dive into an enlightening tale from the teachings of Jesus that beautifully illustrates a powerful truth. Picture this scene. A crowd is poised and angry and they have stones in their hand, and they're ready to punish a woman. They turn to Jesus, expecting him to give his approval, but he surprises them by saying, The one without sin should cast the first stone. His words hit home, and one by one they drop their stones and they leave. Now it's just Jesus and the woman, and he turns to her and he asks, Woman, where are your accusers? And she responds, There aren't any, Lord. Jesus simply says, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. John 8 7 through 11. From this story, we can grasp the essence of Jesus' teaching. We all have weaknesses, our moments of sin, so it's not our place to judge others. Do you agree with this statement? And in our pursuit of salvation, It takes more than just prayer. Do you agree? Consider your journey towards salvation as a starting new adventure. Just as you would invest time 
and effort into building a successful business. You need to actively cultivate your relationship with God, right? Accepting Jesus as your personal Savior is like bringing aboard a trusted partner who guides you and supports you. Prayer is always a wonderful starting point. Do you agree? <laughs> Are you thinking? Good. Romans 1.17 from the mirror expresses it like this. Herein lies the secret of the power of the gospel. It's a secret. That's where the power is in the gospel. There is no good news in it until the righteousness of God is revealed. There's no good news in it. It clearly says that until the righteousness of God is revealed. The dynamic of the gospel is the revelation of God's faith as the only valid basis for our belief. The prophets wrote in advance about the fact that God believes that righteousness reveals the life of our design. Whose righteousness? Righteousness by God's faith. God's faith defines life. There is no good news in it. The gospel. There is no good news in it until the righteousness of God is revealed. When was the righteousness of God revealed? <laughs> it has always been revealed. The dynamic of the gospel is the revelation of God's faith as the only valid basis for our belief. It's his, it's his faith. In that statement, the revelation of God's faith, not ours, not when we believed. So how does that change, in quote, the sinner's prayer? Are we sinners? Or are we saints? Are we God's kids? Were we saved by grace? Amen. Yes. You ready? Here's a drum roll. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Does grace have a time limit? Now I got you thinking. <laughs> Does grace have a time limit? Does God's righteousness revealed have a time limit? Now back to my encounter. I got you thinking. Where was the type and shadow of my encounter I referred to? That's right, the Mount of Transfiguration. Oh my goodness. Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Was Jesus alive in human form on the earth at that time? When he had the encounter of the Mount of Transfiguration, was he alive on the earth? Yes. And was he a man in every way just like you and I? Scripture clearly says he laid down his divinity and he is our example. So Jesus went into the spirit and conversed with Moses and Elijah. Can you and I go into the spirit and converse with Moses and Elijah? 
<laughs> you know that I love the Mount of Transfiguration. I have discussed it many different times during this podcast. What's awesome is the good news shifts, the gospel of the good news shifts, the emphasis away from our failure, our condemnation as being sinners. It shifts it. It highlights what it was that God accomplished in Jesus Christ on humanity's behalf, on you and I. Humanities, that's the all, humanities. I don't think he pulled names out of the hat and said, only these, humanity's behalf. God has always been highlighting the accomplishments of his kids. So, if grace has no timeline... And Jesus was crucified before the foundations of the world. See Revelations 13.8. Was time part of the foundations of the world? Is heaven and hell part of the foundations of the world? (laughs) I love it. I love it. So much we could talk about here. I left you some very good questions to ask Jesus to think. Allow him to redefine the truth of himself. And before we go, the most important one is to ask him to show you when you first believed. I had so much fun doing this episode. Yes, I love it. We we just open the door of truth and he walks right in the room and says, I have a few questions for you. Talk about interviewing Jesus, right? Truth, it is so good, and it brings so much freedom. Freedom. It kind of changes what we think about introducing people to Jesus, doesn't it? Okay, okay. I could just keep going on, but nope, we'll just leave that lovely pregnant pause right there. I have some favors to ask of you. Would you pop over in the show notes? I always leave directions on how to review the podcast. It would tremendously bless me if you would write a review. Let me know how God is moving and shaking and changing the truth that you know today. I would be so blessed. And you're more than welcome to leave a comment in the show notes at the bottom of the blog post. Mm -mm -mm. Ask me some more good questions. I love you. Thank you for spending this time with me today. I will talk to you again next week. Bye now.